In this video, I'm going to show you how to make space in your garden for reptiles. I'm going to show you a few really simple things that you can do, and I'm also going to show you how to build your own reptile refuge. Now, I thought I'd start off with one of the most popular places in our garden for slow worms and grass snakes. And it's really one of my favourites because it's such a simple thing that you can do. So behind this vegetation, um, I've put down an old doormat. And this doormat heats up in the sun and it attracts slow worms and grass snakes to bask underneath it. And that's really key when you're trying to attract reptiles because slow worms and grass snakes and other reptiles, they're exothermic and so they rely on basking and warmth from the sun to heat themselves up so that they've got energy to move. Here's some footage of my old doormat um, from March of this year. Um, now springtime is a really good time to look for reptiles because they've just emerged from hibernation and they need to bask and, and get into breeding condition. So you can see underneath the mat we've got a really good gang of slow worms and there's even a little baby grass snake in the middle. That baby grass snake would have hatched out at the end of the previous summer um, and probably spent the winter hibernating in the earth bank behind the doormat. You can tell it's a grass snake because it's got that characteristic yellow collar on the back of its head. These compost heaps might not look like much to you, but to slow worms and grass snakes they're an excellent reptile refuge. Now grass snakes lay eggs and they need somewhere that's going to be warm um, over the summer months so that their eggs can mature and then hatch. So compost heaps are a really good place for this because as the compost rots down it produces heat. So if you have compost in your garden then it's a really good idea to leave the heat undisturbed um, from kind of the early summer through to the late summer so that if there are any snake eggs in there they can hatch out. It's a really good idea to put a reptile refuge next to a pond and that's because grass snakes in particular really like hunting amphibians. Um, so this is our pond and at the end of the pond you can see that there is um, a roof tile um, and under that roof tile we often get grass snakes and slow worms as well. So I've chosen this spot here for my reptile refuge so you can see that it's got lots of tusky grass around it and this area here, behind it, um, these are all wildflowers that I let grow up really tall every summer. And then if we look behind it here, there's an earth bank um, with lots of rubble and things in it well, anyway. So that's lots of crevices and places for the uh, reptiles to hunt and to hide. So these are the materials that I've chosen to build my reptile refuge. I've chosen some nice big logs and I've also got um, some broken bits of concrete and bricks that I'm going to use as well. And what I'm also going to do is just pile some soil over it too. Um, so you can use whatever you've got lying around in your garden. You can use old plant pots, any old bits of wood, things left over from DIY like old cupboard doors or worktops. It really doesn't matter because the overall thing that you're trying to create is a nice mound with lots of spaces and nooks and crannies where the reptiles can hide and ledges to crawl out and bask on and you want things that will warm up nicely in the sun um, so the reptiles can be <laughs> nice and happy there. I put the logs in the centre of the reptile refuge in an untidy pile with lots of space between them. Now the logs will attract invertebrates as they rot down, um, but they will also help to keep the humidity inside the reptile refuge nice and stable. I covered the logs with rocks and the idea here is that the rocks will cool and warm slowly. So in the summer they'll retain their heat um, for basking, but in the winter they'll stay a nice constant cool temperature so that if there are reptiles hibernating inside my refuge, um, they won't get woken up too early. The final step was to cover the back half of it in soil and that's partly to blend it in with the bank behind it um, but it's also to help keep that constant cool temperature through the winter to help with hibernation. Um, I also put a doormat on the front because slow worms love to bask under um, lovely warm doormats um, and also it's kind of good for me because you can lift it up and see if there are any slow worms or grass snakes there. 
This is the reptile refuge that I built back in March um, and it's the middle of June now and you can see that the vegetation has really grown up around it and that's really good because that tusky thick vegetation will have lots of invertebrates and provide the slow worms and grass snakes with lots of hunting opportunities. So let's have a look under the mat and see if anyone's moved in. There you go, so we've got one slow worm just there and then there's a tail sticking out over there. Oh, where's that one going? There you go. And then there's one just sloping off at the back. Fantastic. So they've already moved in. Oh, and look at this over here. Oh, it's a huge ant's nest. Now those ants are going to be really good food, especially for little slow worms. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. Really happy with that. <laughs>